Yes, that looks great. So I found that um, that last thing you sent me about the notifications. Oh yeah. Uh, that reset. Yeah. Kind of well, there wasn't exactly the path to it. Wasn't that, and I couldn't find another way to get to that exact part. If that makes sense. Um, it could have been was, a very different version. There was a uh, you know voicemail in CUCM, and then there was uh, we should probably restart that so Joe can restart it before he leaves. Do you think he's already left? Probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Message waiting indicators. Um, there was another you know, thing after that, but there was nowhere to refresh. Um, it came up with two that were available. Um, they had two different phone numbers connected to them, one five zero seven zero 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 one thousand one and five oh seven zero 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 one thousand two. Two was off and one was on, meaning message waiting indicator on or off. Sure. Some noise over there so we can make sure we got sound out of the skin. All right, we're checking. We're doing a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. In the event of an actual emergency, you will be directed where to go and what to do. And if you need more help with that, call 1 800 999 Okay?
that is all set. And what we do is press stop and we'll pause. May 8th, 2023, uh, we are located in the TCU High School Media Center. And again, it is 6 p.m. Roll call finds all present. And now we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll move on to our administrative reports, and we have Mr. Lane on deck first. All right, thank you very much. I was told to give a quick presentation, so this will only take about an hour. So, <laughs> um, anyway, well, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, give a presentation about community education. Um, for community ed, uh, we, I, when, when I kind of give my presentations, I say it's easy to describe community ed because we do everything outside of the K-12 system. So between preschool and adult basic education and, and some of the sports and things that happen outside of the, um, outside of the school. So. Uh, we have a lot of fun. So I just want to give some highlights uh, from the year. Um, we kind of look at, you know, we obviously we follow the same fiscal year, but we kind of look at like fall and then winter, spring, and then summer for like our catalogs. We kind of follow like those are our seasons that we follow and how we go. But so in the fall, um, actually back up a little bit, August 1st, we switched to uh, a new online system called Elio. Um, we switched that because um, our current system for registrations and stuff was very cumbersome and difficult and trying to get reports and things like that was uh, getting more difficult and we've had some numerous issues with that so we switched to, um, to Elio and it's been uh, fantastic for us our patrons and people that register our business office um, as well um, so that has been a great marketing tool um, I know we've been talking a lot of marketing at TCU and What's nice about that, we can just push a button for, hey, we want to advertise this widget class. We push a button, it goes right out to Facebook. You know, so this is really nice. So our, uh, we don't have to recreate the wheel with a flyer or anything like that. So we push that button and it looks very professional online and we can share it with our district pages or like the, the local happenings pages and things like that. So that's been a, a fantastic resource um, for us. Um, in the fall, um, we, uh, Continued with our fall soccer program, and we had uh, um, over 50 kids that participated in U8 and U10 soccer. Um, we had a five-on-five -five program with uh, Bell Plain and Jordan that went off very well um, to continue uh, to build our soccer program here uh, with TCU basketball clinic. We had uh, 94 kids, uh, almost 100, which is fantastic. So the gyms are definitely busy. Busy flag football. Flag football, we go one first grade through third grade because once they get in the fourth grade, they go to Mr. Collins and the booster and they play full contact football. So we had 45 kids at first through third grade. Um, the center has their own little flag football on, on site there and then Montgomery Lonzo is together. And then during the, towards the end of the year, they travel to each other's communities and play some games. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. And um, wrestling, we partnered with the wrestling group. We had 74 kids out for wrestling. Uh, winter spring um, we continue with that soccer uh, that soccer push we had 42 kids that participated in clinics um, our dan dance extravaganza which is always really one of our biggest programs that we do we had 54 participants for a dance extravaganza um, chess we just had that here not too long ago a chess tournament at the American Legion over in uh, uh, the center we had 14 kids participate in that uh, we partner with um, uh, the Legion over there and then Colin Scott who is one of our special education teachers now over in the center um, this summer, um, going really busy. Our our fall music or our summer musical is going to be Moana, so we try to keep up with the big exciting themes of uh, what's what's happening with that with that age group. We got 34 kids signed up so far. Uh, we got 101 already signed up for swim lessons this summer. Um, 84 kids playing competitive soccer. Our competitive soccer is U10 and U12. We don't have anything above that. So we have 84, and then we have 107 kids that play recreation, which, which would be like our U6 and our and our U8 kids. So um, soccer-wise, our, our U12s practice here, um, out by the old practice field. Uh, we have U6, U8, and U10 over in Lonsdale. Um, we have U6 and U8 down in our Montgomery, and then we have the U8 over in the U8 over in the center. Um, Special Olympics and Friendship Adventure. Um, I think the last time that uh, I was here, I think we uh, gave some Titan awards to some of our some of our athletes. 
Um, again, we are one of eight or nine school districts in the state that actually have our own special Olympic program, which was which is awesome. Um, and, uh, and that just continues to grow. Uh, we took a little dip, obviously, because of COVID, because these are, uh, you know, our participants were couldn't participate, but we've uh, jumped back leaps and bounds since then, and we've experienced some of the biggest numbers uh, we've had with our Special Olympics. We have five sports that we do. We have bocce ball, poly hockey, unified volleyball, bowling, and our biggest one is swimming, which is going on right now. Um, we had uh, 15 athletes that went off to Edina for the regional uh, meet, and depending on how the summer games look, uh, we'll probably send you know anywhere from 10 to 15 again to the summer games. Um, they are going to be doing a, a meet here on Wednesday. Um, our group swims at 4 o'clock, and then at 5.30 we have the Special Olympics Wizards team that comes from the Belle Plaine Jordan area um, that swims after us. And we're going to have a, a meet uh, against them on Wednesday. We, ha we had this last year, so we're going to have, um, I think, close to 25 to close to 30 athletes that are going to be swimming. Uh, during that time, so we we got medals. We're doing pizzas. It's going to be a you know grand old time. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then tied with our uh, um, Special Olympics, we have our Friendship Adventure Program, which is more like our crafts, arts, enrichment kind of classes that we do. Um, we do a lot of bingo. Bingo is always a hit. Um, but we do have, uh, for example, we have a, a bingo and pizza class tomorrow. And the next week we have like a flower plant and flowers class. Um, and doing some painting and things like that. So in all, we have about uh, 155 that have participated in our programs this year for Special Olympics and then our, our Friendship Adventures. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Melissa Bell is our, is our uh, coordinator for Friendship Adventure and Special Olympics. She's also our head, head, considered our head delegate for Special Olympics. Um, and her and some of our volunteers do a fantastic job. They do the polar plunge. Uh, raise all kinds of money for the program, you know, so we're spending 500 plus dollars sending these athletes on a bus to Edina. We're going to be doing it again here in June, you know, and some of these other things, purchasing hockey sticks and things like that. So uh, driver's ed, um, driver's ed has been going really well. We host three classes a year, fall, spring and summer. Um, we had 119 registered so far. We do got a class coming up here in um, here in June on June 5th um, here at the high school. Um, that class will, will fill up again. The guys, have, we have three instructors. We're very blessed uh, to have three um, compared to some other school districts that are, are very suffering. They may have one, they may have none. Um, and they, the guys have been driving since the end of March and they are booked for behind the wheel through the end of August. There are no more slots left, you know, so, um, and they'll be driving a little bit in the fall. We don't drive in the winter time, um, but they are busy and they do a, do a fantastic job. Kid Zone, which is our child care program. Um, throughout the year, we've had 211 registrations. Doesn't mean they're all with us every single day and doesn't mean they're um, you know, gonna be with us throughout the whole year. Sometimes it's short term, sometimes it's long term, different ages, things like that. Um, but we've had 211 registrations in our, in our fiscal year. Um, Titans Preschool, this current year, we have 166 uh, preschool kids that are in our program. Um, that includes any special education students um, that are in there. Um, our five day is typically our biggest, then it's our three day, then it's our two day, which is for our young, <coughs> young threes. Um, scholarships uh, for preschool is, uh, is very high. We gave out 51 last year. Um, majority of the money that we get um, for scholarships comes from Pathways 2. Most community ed preschool departments in the state get um, a certain sum of money to offer for scholarships for folks that qualify financially. And we have been absolutely fortunate that we get preschool scholarship money from the Rice County United Way and the, pre and the Greater Mankato United Way. Uh, we get about 10,005 a year between the two that we uh, utilize to maybe, you know, some of these families may not qualify free and reduced lunch wise, but maybe they're in a hardship situation. Maybe they lost a job. Uh, maybe they got multiple kids that are in preschool, plus they got kids on on top of it. You know, so we, we work with them, uh, primarily Natalie Eckstein, our early learning coordinator, to try to figure out, hey, would, you know, can, we, can you do half? Can you do this or that? We try to make that money go as long as we can. And uh, Natalie and I both gave those presentations last week to uh, the, both United Ways, one in Northfield, one in Mankato, um, to hopefully continue to get that, uh, that support and, and to keep reaching those families so they get a preschool experience before kindergarten. Um, going into the next year, we're already at about 130, so we should be 
uh, pretty close on those same numbers uh, um, as we go. We'll get registrations periodically until almost until preschool starts. Um, and we're already we have 29 requests for scholarships to try to meet some of that some of that demand. We don't turn anybody away. We work with them as best that we can. Some some are um, we'll get on payment plans. And you know we had one gentleman that made a payment plan for a couple of years, 25 bucks a month, and he paid it off. A couple of years. That was pretty good. We wanted to give him a old trophy from the back for doing that, but we gave him a lot of credit. Uh, ECFE, which is our early childhood family education, we host classes uh, throughout the year, uh, during the morning, and then uh, in the evening. Uh, we had 70, 74 students and their caregivers. Uh, this is almost double from the, the year before, which COVID had a lot, lot to do with that. A um, couple highlights from that. We, have 12, we had 12 toddlers here in our Montgomery, Montgomery evening class which was maxed out, which was, which was fantastic. So hopefully that bumps up our census numbers as we get coming up. Um, so we had a couple of peak classes going on. Uh, it was kind of a peak, we call it peak, it's peak in the kindergarten. Um, we had eight, stu eight, eight of our ECFE students that went on to peak, which is good. That means they're probably gonna come into our preschool uh, program where they're gonna go off to kindergarten. Uh, kick off uh, to our fall ECFE family nights. So we, what we try to do is have one nice big event for each community. Um, so we have our fire safety night, which is in Lonsdale. We have a literacy and family night in La Center. And then of course our big one is our breakfast with Santa um, here, which is also a fundraiser for us that we have here. Um, our Santa Claus happens to be a principal here. So he does a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh, grant, grant wise, uh, this is something that uh, we felt that you know we really needed to mention besides the um, Ten thousand five hundred dollars that we get from the United Ways. Uh, we got a twenty thousand um, dollar donation for a grant from the S Initiative Foundation. Um, this is going to go towards like a lot of our early childhood and rep programs in kindergarten and preschool, um, new furnitures and things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, getting all that before the school year, we just uh, very fortunate that we're getting thirty five hundred dollars from the new Lonsdale Community Foundation. Um, they're they're going to give us an, uh, this money for an outdoor learning space. So if you've ever made the drive to the back behind the, the Montgomery Building um, Elementary Middle School area, you'll see a fenced off area behind our preschool space um, that's got a bunch of different uh, slides and activities and kitchens and, and things like that for the kids to go out and play. We're going to try to replicate that in Lonsdale uh, with that. So we've got some uh, seed money to get that started. Uh, we're going to get 650 books from the Initiative Foundation for our Early Childhood Program, so that's fantastic. Uh, some of you may remember, um, this is well before my time, but uh, we're getting $2,000 from the Barb Jackson Memorial Fund. Um, she is the uh, founder of our TCU Early Childhood Program. Um, so a lot of those monies are going right back into the program, so we've made some of those purchases uh, um, already, which is uh, uh, greatly appreciated. Um, lastly, you know, just like uh, um, anything else with some challenges you know, that you've probably heard from, you know, Superintendent Babcock and the principals staffing, you know, for us too. It's, uh, it's difficult for us and trying to get licensed, uh, um, you know, staff such as parent ed positions and things like that and uh, um, finding subs is kind of, the, kind of the norm as well. So, um, but yeah, so we are, we are busy and uh, summer's probably our busiest time, honestly. You know we're wrap, getting you know we're wrapping up preschool, but we got soccer and t-ball and baseball and summer rec and and everything else going on in the pool and um, but it's fun, it's fun. We're excited. Any questions for me? Thanks, Lane. Yeah, yeah, Lane, yeah. doing what you're doing. Good job. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lane. More than an hour. <laughs> Fourteen minutes. Do you want me to pull this up? What's that? You want me to pull No, this? I'm going to do my own. Okay. People can read those if they want. Okay. Right. Shut it off. <clears throat> Not that important. Would you like me to start? Go ahead. All right. I'm going to take these off. So first of all, welcome everyone. Welcome to the students in the back from, you guys are in social studies class, right? <coughs> all right. So welcome. So anyway, I'm just going to highlight some things uh, uh, that's been going on uh, over the last three, four weeks. Um, and just make sure that we give kudos to people <coughs> in the right spots and some new things that are happening and where we're going. Um, but first of all, I want to say that it is Teacher Appreciation Week, so I want to make it known that uh, we want to appreciate all the teachers. Thank you, Hillary, for being a teacher as well. 
Um, so we want to make sure that we recognize our teaching staff uh, for the job that they do. Governor Waltz also declared that May 10th as School Nurse Appreciation Day, uh, which is also pretty significant uh, to even always have uh, full nurses on staff is pretty significant these days. So, and they do a phenomenal job for our district. So I want to recognize that first. Um, first thing I'm going to start off with there are some student things. Uh, I'm going to highlight them, highlight them real quick. But we sent off 38 students to FFA state uh, competition and we came back with a ton of place winners and some, some folks that are actually going to be going to nationals. That's a lot of students um, to make it off to state and FFA. So it gives the breadth of where that program is at. We had six, six students compete at the national, um, Nationals for BPA, which is Business Professionals of America. Um, they did pretty well out there. Um, so to have six students of size school of ours to go to nationals to California it was pretty awesome. Uh, junior Aiden Milan was selected to the Minnesota All-State Jazz Band. Uh, he's, he was one of two saxophone players chosen. Uh, he is the first ever TCU student. That is about the highest honor you can get um, as a music student to be in high school in Minnesota. So that's pretty awesome and he's a junior. Um, National Honor Society inducted 28 new members. We have currently about 80 members in National Honor Society. Um, <coughs> which is pretty amazing as well. TriFest uh, was a huge success, and I can't say enough amazing things about what that program does for our students. I keep saying that I want product to be coming out of our doors. All those students showed product of what TCU does. Uh, the enlightenment, the enrichment, the productivity that they did for TriFest was absolutely amazing. Uh, Carrie Langer did a good job with that group of students, and uh, it continues to grow, so that was pretty awesome. We had three elementary music so showcases in the last month. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into that, uh, if you had a chance to go to it, but uh, our music teachers do a really good job of uh, maintaining and controlling the little ones, <laughs> as they sing. Um, I'm always pretty impressed with that. Um, currently, we have a group of students in the digital media class that are making a promotional video for the district and about the district, um, which is gonna be amazing. Um, and I put a little note on here, wait until you, wait until you see that. The, um, Presentation that they did for Anna Hoy and myself was out of this world. Um, so when that comes out, uh, we put it on uh, the new website. Um, I think it would be pretty amazed at what our students produced. Uh, and we will recognize them for that as well. Uh, we opened up applications for our student summer helpers. Um, and currently, we are getting more and more and more. At, at first, I was wondering if we would get a lot. Uh, we've already maximized how many we need, and we have more to keep applying. So we'll be doing a full, uh, some interviewing processes with that as well. So really excited about that. We have students that are going to be working um, in the food service as well. Um, so we're starting to get more students involved um, and to be a part of, of who we are. Um, and also they'll get some, some mentoring from that as well. So that's really exciting. Prom this was this last weekend was a huge success. Uh, we had, there was a ton of students up here. Uh, it was at the science, well, Grand March was here, and then um, the actual prom itself was at the Science Museum, which was pretty cool. So students had a chance to walk around the Science Museum and then go upstairs to a common room for their dancing and so on. Um, and then thank you to the parents that host the after prom. I know that's a lot of work, um, but I know the kids always love it, and there's a lot of things that they do. So um, different note, our middle school, I keep bringing this up, but our middle school STEAM model and planning is underway. Uh, we are working on cleaning out those spaces. Um, right now in the center. Uh, we'll start cleaning out the space in TCU Montgomery in a few weeks. Um, and we're starting to move ahead with what we're doing with that. We have a staff right now uh, that's meeting as, as to what, how we're gonna plan and do that. Uh, class names are pretty much on the go. Now it's just a matter of what to incorporate and how we um, teach those particular classes and what we're gonna do in those spaces. So that's been some meetings we've had this week, or not this week, uh, today, and then one last week as to how we're gonna do that. Um, now that we're looking at um, calling a STEAM program, we're also going to be looking at grants uh, moving forward and also doing some work with uh, uh, Mankato State University of Minnesota to do some grant running to involve some student teachers and teaching practices within um, TCU. So down the road, if all that passes, we'll be looking at that as well. So that's uh, really exciting that uh, the admin team has worked really hard to get that up and running. I know it's been something we've been talking about for a while at TCU is to get a middle school program going, but it hasn't stopped there because we're also um, talking about it at the lower levels, um, and that really is part of the funding and grant processes to get the elementary involved with that. So right now we're looking at fifth and sixth grade, 
and how to get elementary to uh, work with some of our project lead the way um, things that we have already in our hands to start enhancing kids to get ready for steam so um, been a lot of work with that um, we've also been working with local businesses as, as you know I've been um, going and Lane and I have been going to uh, local businesses to uh, get some partnerships going so that we can start uh, having them involved in the school district and our students can start giving back to them as well. Um, Honey Berg, who is our workforce coordinator with the South Central Service Cooperative, is also joining Lane and I on this adventure. Um, Lane and her met, it was today I believe, today, yep. uh, to talk about how we bring all these businesses to the table and how we can start doing some partnerships. Um, and so that process is up and running um, and it's starting to look really, really good, especially since we have some new folks that will be coming in teaching next year that will be really invigorated um, as to part of that process. So I'm uh, really excited where that's at. Uh, we've had a meeting to discuss AEDs um, and some of our safety things and where we have um, things within our buildings and to get our staff to know uh, where particular safety equipment is. Um, so if we ever have a need, um, we have people that can help. Uh, we want to be proactive, not reactive. Uh, so we're also looking at doing some different types of like tourniquets in. Uh, we're looking at uh, Narcan to be placed uh, near AD, AEDs. So we're really looking out for the safety of our students and staff um, and that people know where those are. So we'll be doing some training things uh, coming up in the fall. Um, and then we also have our um, four buildings going to be practicing uh, all out evacuations uh, coming up in the next week or two. I know Lonsdale's is tomorrow. Um, and to start practicing where kids and people need to go in case we do ever need to do a full emergency. Um, so we'll be working and practicing on that as well. Um, and we're doing some different strategies with that that we haven't done before. So we'll see where that ends up. Um, we are also going to re-implement uh, ALP, the Alternative Learning Program. We will be calling it something different, but uh, for ease of purpose, uh, the Alternative Learning Program at the high school. Uh, to help students that struggle in particular uh, subject areas or maybe just have struggled with school in general so we can help students to succeed. Um, and that, uh, that plan is in really heavy planning stages right now as we look at how we're going to do it. I don't want the students to just be in a program. I want students to learn um, as they're in a program. And how we get students to filter in and out of that um, is the key. We don't want students just to be in there. Uh, I want students to be able to come in and then hopefully we exit them back out. Uh, but that will be within our own district so we can keep our kids in our district. Um, and let's see, a couple more quick things. Summer school planning for elementary and middle school um, is very heavy underway. I was just talking to um, uh, Chris about that. We have a lot of meetings happening this summer to uh, do it implementation, further implementation of where we're at with our academics and our programming um, and how we're going to transition between grade levels to middle school to high school um, and really doing a heavy focus on where we're at and getting things really, like I keep mentioning, back to the basics of teaching and education. Uh, our staff has had the opportunity now to grow into the new things we've implemented this year. Now we're at a spot where we can really start to hone in the skills. Um, and part of that process too is uh, looking at when we have meetings and minimizing people being out um, of buildings and, and so on and so forth. So uh, last couple things, um, upcoming events, uh, we have insurance uh, open enrollment kickoff. I gotta thank Jean, Jean and Maggie for all the work that they've done uh, with the insurance process that we're in right now. Uh, but we have an open enrollment kickoff that's tomorrow. Um, and then we have the open, full enro open enrollment period is May 9th to May 26th. So we'll have a lot of staff and teachers that will be coming in and asking uh, our insurance folks um, different plans and so on with insurance. And then we have a pop concert uh, this, no not this Friday, next Friday the 19th. Uh, there's a dinner at 5.30 and the concert begins at 7.15. If you haven't had a chance to watch our music department yet, I would recommend coming out because it's been pretty amazing. And then last but not least, we have graduation on Friday, May 26th at, six, at 7 p.m. at the high school, which is just around the corner. And Marsha will be crying because her son's graduating. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I will. <laughs> so outside of that, you know, there's a lot I could put on here. Um, and I know I missed something, and I always probably will. But uh, we have a lot of great things going on, and we always need to recognize what those are. Um, so um, thank you for allowing me to share the great things that are going on with our school district. Perfect, thank you. All right, next we'll move on to approve the agenda. I'll seek a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. 
I have a motion by Kevin Huber, second by Trevor Hone to approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is passed 7 0. Next, we move on to the consent agenda. We have the approval of the minutes of our April 10th, 2023 regular school board meeting. Uh, under personnel, we have employment ending. Uh, we have Luke Fleck, science teacher, Sherry Nelson, part time custodian, Penny Ord, cook's helper, Kim Sladek, cook, Alicia Kell Keller, uh, ECFE teacher, Vanessa Schmel, fourth grade teacher. Chase Burkhart, K-8 Music, Amanda Bizek, ECFE teacher. Under new hires, we have Jenna Gullick, part-time kids zone supervisor, Tana Hadler, a Phi Ed teacher, Samantha Kyle, math, um, avid student success teacher, Don Markison, business teacher, BPA advisor, Savannah Linder, special education, um, Jose Vasquez, part-time custodian, and Mike Reeser, high school um, egg science and technology teacher. We have a few leave of absences, uh, Jamie Bruns, third grade teacher, and Nicole Kubish, uh, special education teacher. We have approved in the bills of amount of $1,620,176.24, did not say it the right way, but uh, in the finance report, I will seek a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. I'll second. I have a motion by Chris Velasak, second by Hillary Birdsell to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is passed 7 0. Uh, we have the open forum, and I believe there have not been any requests for this evening. Um, under informational items, we have the enrollment update. All right, so enrollment update we're up st two students from last month, so we're at 1830. Uh, we grabbed one student in two of our elementary schools, and then I just uh, compared to last year, we're about 14 down from where we are or where we were at this point last year. So, uh, just a little bit down from last year, but holding steady, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, committee updates. We have QCOP. I was not at the meeting. I was. They were talking about AVID summer training and um, what they were going to do with that. They were talking about um, additional staffing or, or school representatives from each building and then they're going to present to us at the, the work session Correct. in May here coming up um, about what has been going on all here. Uh, transportation? So transportation went twice on Palmer's contract where our contract with them is up. Um, they presented that contract with language. We just met before this meeting with Gene to come up with a counter proposal and hopefully get some realistic figures out there and get a contract signed. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Um, first up would be our April donations. Be it resolved that the School Board of Independent School District number 2905 accepts with appreciation the following gifts or donations and permits their use as designated by the donors. Montgomery Knights of Columbus, $500 for Community Ed Youth Summer Sports. Lee Center Community Club, $250 for a High School Avid Trip. Minnesota Millwork, Robot Storage Box and Metal Storage Bench at a cost of $2,992.45. And Lonsdale American Legion, $250 for Community Ed Summer Flag Football Program. All right, since Chris introduced the, the resolution, I'll need a second. I'll second. I have the donations resolution introduced by Chris Velasek, second by Josh Belke, to approve uh, the following donations. This will be a roll call vote. Hillary? Yes. Trevor? Yes. Chris? Yes. Marcia a yes. Kevin? Yes. Josh? Yes. And Cindy? Yes. Uh, motion resolution has passed. We have roll call vote 7 0. Next, we have our equipment auction and disposal. Superintendent Babcock, members of the board, I'm Jean Kapp, Director of Business Services. Um, requesting the board's approval for auction or disposal of the following list of the of district assets. 
So this list of assets was submitted by TCU department heads and reviewed. Um, the plan for now is to partner with, I don't know if it's Gray for Graph Auctions for an online auction of goods. Um, we're hoping to go online because then we won't have to move things from place to place and then if they don't sell then they can be disposed of at site. Um, so this intention to auction or dispose items was presented to and approved by the TCU Facility Committee last summer. Um, and then site and department administrators uh, added to the auction list and it was reviewed internally before presentation to the board. So not a huge list um, of things, but it'll be good to get some of these things out of out of the district that we're not using anymore. And um, Superintendent Babcock kind of mentioned to some of the spaces that we're hoping that we are going to be um, moving back into. So this will help with that as well. And Eric uh, Schroeder, the director of facilities, is really coordinating more of the auction side. So, all right, I'll seek a motion. I need a second. I'll second. I have a motion by Kevin Huber, second by Josh Belke, to approve the list of items for the auction or disposal. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion is passed 7 0. Uh, next, we have our food service renewal. Yes, um, thanks. So I'm recommending for your approval the annual renewal of TCU's food service contract with Taher. The agreement authorized Taher to exclusively manage and operate the food service offered by TCU. This is the second year of our contract renewal with Taher after completing the bid process in fis fiscal year 22. Um, oh, I have a, a typo in my <laughs> a typo in my. Um, uh, executive summary, the renewal includes a 7% increase, so it'll be um, 20 cents per meal. And then I have a table in there. Oh, you might have to refresh. Yes, I'll say just refresh. Because I got it at 4.30. <laughs> so that's why it's not on there. There you go. Thank you. Um, yep, so I had, I had it all ready. They originally wanted 8.8%, um, so they're allowed to go up to the CPI maximum. Um, but I was able to work with them to reduce it to seven. So um, it will be the 7% increase, so it's a 20, 0 0.2074 cents per meal. So we do cost reimbursement per meal. Um, so they each meal that is served by Taher, then they earn 20, that 20 cent rate. So that'll be for the 23, 24 school year. So it's just a one year contract? It's a one-year renewal, okay. Um, and so we are required every five years to go out for bid, and that is a very extensive process um, that is heavily dictated by the state, by the um, Minnesota Department of Ed. It takes about four months um, to go through it all, and then you are allowed to have five years where you just renew. You don't have to. Um, if you're unhappy with it, then you could go out for renewal or sooner. But yeah, it's just a one year renewal. This is year two or three, isn't it? Two. Yeah, I think this is like our second renewal. So it'll be the third year on that contract. I'll make a motion. I'll second. I have a motion by Trevor Holmes, second by Chris Velesek to approve the food service management company renewal contract with Taher uh, for the 23 24 school year. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is passed 7 0. Uh, we have a grant approval. Uh, looks like from the Lonsdale um, Community uh, Foundation for an outdoor learning space at the Lonsdale Elementary School for thirty-five hundred bucks. I'll seek a motion. I'll make a motion. Sorry. I have a motion by Chris Velasek, second by Kevin Huber, to approve a grant from the Lonsdale Community Foundation in the amount of $3,500 for a new outdoor learning space at the Lonsdale Elementary School. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is passed, 7-0. Uh, next we have our insurance bid acceptance. <laughs> Back again. I um, just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> silly, I didn't know if Lane wanted to come up again. Um, <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> so, uh, I should have made him read it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, it's oh, too nice out for that. So, <laughs> so I'm Superintendent Babcock, members of the board, 
Um, on behalf of the Tri City United Insurance Committee, I'm recommending the TCU School Board accept Blue Cross Blue Shield as the health provider for the Tri City United District for the 23 24 plan year. Um, this recommended Recommendation is the result of a multi-month process in accordance with the Health Insurance Transparency, Transparency Act and is made with consensus of the Insurance Committee. Um, so we had, we will have, TCU will offer four Blue Cross Blue Shield health plans. They can, employees can choose from two networks, AWARE or high value, and from two deductible levels, 3,500 or 7,500. Um, we did only, for the 23-24 plan year, we did only receive two bids for health insurance from Blue Cross Blue Shield and the Public Employees Insurance Program. Health, partner, health Partners and South Central Service Cooperative declined a bid. Um, we did receive an average, the Blue Cross Blue Shield bid reflected an average premium increase of 46%. Um, but the but heap bid was unattractive due to cost plan designs and a requirement for a two-year commitment. Um, so after reviewing both bids, the TCU Insurance Committee elected to accept the Blue Cross Blue Shield bid. Um, the large increase was resulted by two factors, a lack of market competition and then high utilization by TCU's membership pool. So due to the significant increase, the committee worked together to recommend plan design changes that would partially mitigate employee costs. Um, and then those plan design changes were approved by all five TCU union groups. Um, as are required when plan designs change benefits. Um, uh, so yeah, I wanna thank the insurance committee for their time and thoughtfulness during this process. Um, we met on four occasions between January and April. The 23-24 plan year begins July 1 and concludes July, June 30th of 2024. And open enrollment will run from May 9th to May 6th. Or to May 26th. Um, and we are again coordinating sign up uh, for one-on-one -on -one meetings with our insurance advisors. Um, the hit -a bid process is like a, a process that we're required to complete every two years, um, but there is no reason you can't. So next year then we would have a renewal with Blue Cross Blue Shield or we could go out for bid again. So I have on there kind of more about the hit -a, the hit -a pro bid process. Like I said, it's a two year process. And then we have um, the insurance committee members. So it's made up of teachers um, paraprofessionals, um, we have somebody from every group, it's open to, for them to be a part of it. Um, I am required to have three union members from the largest union present when we're making like a decision. So that <coughs> we have, we're required to have three teachers on like at decision points. Um, and then we have Paul Peterson as our advisor and then we also have Randy Hunt and Darren Hunt of House of Insurance as advisors as well. All right, I'll seek a motion. A motion. I'll second it. I have a motion by City Fleetcheck, second by Josh Belke, to approve the Blue Cross Blue Shield as a health insurance provider for the 23-24 and the 24-25 school years. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is passed 7-0. Thank you. All right, next we have um, sub-temporary rates of pay. There must be some other changes in there. Which one was changing? Um, I think some of the- Yep, summer rec The staff, summer staff? Lifeguards. Lifeguards. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep, a few of them on my side. Yep. All right, I'll seek a motion. I'll say. I have a motion by Kevin Huber, second by Chris Velasek to approve the sub temporary rates of pay schedule. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion is passed 7 0. Now we're supposed to read this unrequested leave of absence, right? Proposal? Are we supposed to read it fully? I can read it. You got it? All yeah. right. Be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 2905 as follows that it is proposed that Mary Dooley, a teacher of said school district, be placed on unrequested leave of absence without pay or fringe benefits, effective at the end of the 2022-2023 school year on June 30th, 2023, pursuant to MS 122A.40 subdivision 10 and article 14, 
Section 1 of the current master agreement between the school district and the exclusive representative. All right, I will seek a motion on, or a second on this. I'll second it. So um, Chris Vlasek introduced the unrequested leave of absence. Trevor Holmes seconded. This will be a roll call vote. Um, Hillary? Yes. Trevor? Yes. Chris? Yes. Marsha is a yes. Kevin? Yes. Um, Josh? Yes. And Cindy? Yes. Uh, the leave of absence, or unrequested leave of absence, has been um, approved 7 0 roll call vote. All right. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. Motion by Kevin Huber, second by Trevor Hohn to adjourn the meeting at 6 40 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is passed 7 0. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you learned something. <laughs> <laughs>